Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Adrian, Texas. Its claim to fame is it's halfway between Los Angeles and Chicago. It's the midpoint on US Route 66 between LA and Chicago. I don't know about you, but it doesn't make me want to visit Adrian. However, it does make me want to tell you about the distance formula and the midpoint formula. Now, in both of these cases, they're formulas to figure out what the distance is or what the midpoint is. But in both of these cases, if you use your head, you can probably figure it out without memorizing the formula. Well, let's talk about the distance formula first. Let's say we were asked to determine the distance between these two points or the length of that line. The two points are minus 11 minus 4 and 15 positive 4. And I think you can see that I, there's both a horizontal and a vertical component to that distance. Along the x-axis, I'm moving from minus 11 over to plus 15. And along the y-axis, I'm moving from minus 4 up to positive 4. Well, I can see a triangle there. I can see a triangle that's composed of my line plus the horizontal uh, component of that distance plus the vertical component of that distance. And that looks like a right triangle. Now the base of this right triangle, I could count the number of spaces between the uh, point minus 11 minus 4 and the point over here where we reach the uh, point on the x-axis where the second point is, and that's 26 spaces. I could also figure that out because I'm moving along the x-axis. I'm changing from an x of minus 11 to an x of positive 15. I'm moving 11 spaces to get to 0, and then another 15 spaces to get to 15. That's 26 spaces. Or I could say 15 minus my other uh, x value, minus 11, 15 minus minus 11 equals 26. The same is true up and down the y-axis. Our vertical motion is composed of moving from a y value of minus 4 up to a y value of positive 4. I'm going from here up to here. And I could count those spaces, and it's 8. But I could also subtract my two y values. I could take 4 and subtract minus 4 from it, and I'd come up with 8. Well, now we know that the distance of the base of this right triangle is 26, and the height is 8. So I could use the Pythagorean theorem and figure out what d was. d squared would equal 26 squared plus 8 squared. I could take the square root of both sides of this equation and say that d equals the square root of 26 squared plus 8 squared. And that equals approximately 27.2. d equals the square root of 26 squared plus 8 squared was our formula for calculating the length of that line. The 26 right there we got by subtracting 1x value from the other x value. x2 minus x1 equaled 26. And our 8 over here, we got that by subtracting one y value from the other y value. y2 minus y1 equaled 8. Well, I could make this formula for the distance a generic formula by substituting x2 minus x1 for 26 and substituting y2 minus y1 for 8. If I did that, it would look just like that. d equals the square root of 
x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. What is the length of a line that runs from minus 2, 4 to 3, minus 5? Well, there's a couple ways we can figure this out. We can just plug these values into the equation and then solve the equation and we'll have our answer. And that's pretty easy if you like to memorize equations. If you don't like to memorize equations, then you can reconstruct it. You can figure this out. You don't really have to draw the line, but it might be helpful. And then you're going to figure out what's the length of this line and what's the length of this line. Because I've got, if I've got those two lengths, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of that line. Well, d squared is going to equal the, distant, the difference in my x values. My x goes from minus 2 to positive 3. So I'm going to subtract minus 3 from minus 2. I'm going to get minus 5. And if I count, I come up with the same answer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, positive 5, but that'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. And my vertical motion is the change in my y value. I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 spaces. But I could figure that out because my y goes from minus 5 to positive 4. That's 4 minus minus 5 or 9. So d squared equals minus 5 squared plus 9 squared. Or it equals 25 plus 81 or 106. And the square root, the square root of 106 is approximately 10.3. Well, now let's talk about midpoint. The midpoint of that line segment is the point that's right smack dab in the middle of that line segment. It's equal distance from both ends. And I'm going to define that point with a coordinate pair, an x value and a y value that describes where on the coordinate plane that midpoint is. Well, how do I come up with the x value? Well, I can see that I'm moving from 15 to minus 5 along the x-axis. That's a total of 20 spaces. So my midpoint would be 10 spaces from either extreme. My midpoint would be 15 minus 10 or minus 5 plus 10. My midpoint would be 5. The x value of my midpoint is 5. Now another way to look at this is my midpoint x value is the average of the two extreme x values. If I were to average 15 and minus 5, I come up with 5. How about my y coordinate? Well, I can see I'm moving from 9 to minus 1. I'm moving 10 spaces up and down the y axis. Well, half of 10 is 5, so I'm going to move 5 from either of the extreme values. 9 minus 5 is 4. 4 is also the average of 9 and minus 1. If I add 9 and minus 1 and divide it by 2, I get 4. Well, now we've figured out our x value and our y value for the midpoint. We know that our midpoint is at 5. 4. Now there's also a formula to help you figure out that midpoint. That formula is the sum of the x values divided by 2 and the sum of the y values divided by 2. That's really the average x value and the average y value. In the case of this problem, if we were to insert our x's and our y's into these equations, our x would be minus 5 plus 15 over 2. Our y would be 9 plus minus 1 over 2. Or 10 over 2 
8 over 2, or 5 4. 5 4 is definitely our midpoint. See if you can figure this one out. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my answer. We're asked to find the midpoint of the line that runs from 2 9 to 14 minus 5. And we can pull out a formula and do this, or I bet we can do it in our heads. And we'll feel a lot smarter if we just do it in our heads. So let's do it in our heads. The point that I'm looking for that defines the midpoint will have an x value and a y value. And the x value will be the average of the two x values of our extreme points. And the y value will be the uh, average value of the two y values of our extreme points. Our x values of the extreme points are 2 and 14. The average of 2 and 14 is 2 plus 14 divided by 2, 16 divided by 2, 8. So I say 8 is our x value of the midpoint. Our y value would be 9 plus minus 5, or 9 minus 5 divided by 2, or 4 divided by 2, or 2. So in my head, I figured out that the midpoint is 8, 2. Now let's use the formula. We'll substitute our x values and our y values, and we'll get 16 divided by 2, 4 divided by 2, or 8, 2. Midpoints are kind of easy. Midpoints may be easy, but this problem isn't easy. You're going to have to think a bit on this, and I gave you a good hint. You're going to have to use both the distance formulas and the Pythagorean theorem. And you may even want to draw a picture. All right, hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to see my solution. Did you figure this one out? Well, if you did, you're a smart cookie. If you didn't, Pay attention, and we're going to teach you how to do it. I gave you a good hint. I said you're going to need to use the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem. Well, to use the Pythagorean theorem, I need some distances. I need some lengths, and I don't have those yet. So let's figure out the distances between these three points. I got three points, and there'll be three line segments that extend between the three points. So let's start with the line segment that runs from 0.35 and goes to 0.3 minus 1. We'll use the distance formula, which is the distance equals the square root of the difference in our x's squared plus the difference in our y's squared. When I plug in those numbers and do the math, I get the, the uh, distance equals the square root of 36, or 6. Now let's try this line segment that runs from 3 minus 1 to minus 2 minus 1. I'll plug those numbers into the equation for distance. And I'll conclude that the distance equals the square root of 25, or 5. My third line segment runs from 3, 5 and goes to minus 2, minus 1. When I plug those numbers into the equation, I determine that the distance of that line segment is 7.8 units. So now I've got three line segments. It's time to use the Pythagorean theorem. If these three line segments represents a triangle, a right triangle, then the square of the longer of these three line segments, which would have to be the hypotenuse, the square of the hypotenuse would have to equal the sum of the squares of the other two sides. C square equals B square plus A square. So let's try it. I got three values, 7.8, 5, and 6. The longest is 7.8, so that's my hypotenuse. 
does 7.8 squared equals 6 squared plus 5 squared? Well, 7.8 squared is 61. 6 squared is 36. 5 squared is 25. 36 plus 25 equals 61. So this is a right triangle. And if I graph it, it sure looks like a right triangle. Well, that's our lesson on determining the distance between two points and the midpoint of a line that runs between two points. Now it's time to test your skill. Go to www.mastermath.info and you'll find some worksheets and quizzes that will help you understand this concept better. Well, I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned a great deal. And I hope we see you again real soon.